All right, we got a great episode for you today. We're talking about a whole lot of NFL news. We're talking about some dynasty questions. Do you draft for need? Do you draft best available? And we dive into the mailbag and ask the fantasy genie to grant us a wish. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, March 30th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. And a pile of deucers. Hot, a steamy, <laughs> steaming pile. Mm. How you guys doing over there in Deucers Alley? Doing great. We're looking yeah. pretty hot, all right. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, man. All right. Yeah. Okay. Gross. Great. Do some push-ups. Glad I threw it over there. Uh, we've got a great Way show. Way to reference to- a show that A, hasn't aired yet, and B, isn't this podcast. Yeah, but the, but the listeners, they'll get it eventually, and then they'll go, oh, oh, okay, I get how he really slandered him, and, yeah. and, and they will applaud me for it. Al Borland, best friend of Jason Moore. Yeah. Um, big show today, some news to talk about, some news for probably Mike to overreact to. What what could you possibly Just talk trying about? Trying to preempt that. I know what's coming. I can hear it. I can hear the train on the tracks. Uh but we'll get into it in a minute here. Uh, a couple of headlines at the top. You can head over to Foot Clan Vote if you have a minute. We are nominated for a couple of sports podcast awards that uh frankly Brooks wants to win. I mean, it's really his ego that we're dealing with right now. Brooks, well, Brooks just the man who has infinite wealth, right? What what do you give to that man? Awards. You give him awards. Yeah, <laughs> you, you give him something you can't just buy, right? right? And well, that can, shows, Brooks. Can we do that? Yeah. Why don't you just buy it? No, it has to be genuine. The awards. Oh, okay. So, Come yeah. on, Foot Clan. I need him. He's a rich man of honor. Otherwise, I would like. I'll take an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> can you just go to the manufacturer? <laughs> Best actor, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> No, like, but I mean, you know, they they have like the the awards they give away when it's like not on air. And I'll just be like, yeah, I got one of those. Just just fill me in. Yeah, I mean, you could you could probably buy you could probably buy some things, but he wants to earn them. Yeah. So that's footclanvote.com. and then uh, huge shout out to everybody out there that has subscribed to the Fantasy Footballers Dynasty podcast. We yes. made made the announcement on Tuesday. I'll make it again. Uh, we have listened to the. Uh, the bellowing cries of the dynasty community. <laughs> we want much like dynasty. It's like a whale, a whale <laughs> cry. And uh, we have a, a dynasty specific show coming out once a week, starting on Wednesday, April 5th. It's going to be hot. You can go over to Spotify, Apple podcasts, um, everywhere you listen to podcasts, follow the show, the fantasy footballers dynasty podcast, which is now, at this moment, despite not having an episode, the number one sports podcast on Apple. Fantastic. You did it, well, Foot Clan. It has an episode, but that episode is actually one minute long, and it's just a uh, teaser trailer it's just from Jason. Jason. Uh, that being said, it is not just a teaser trailer from Jason. A it's trailer from, from Jason. It is <laughs> fire intro music ah, that yes, you have made, you. Mike, that will be on the show. Uh, that will be the intro music you'll find out soon, but it is so good. So thank you for uh, supporting that. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to be fun. Rookies, dynasty landscape, news, lots of good stuff. And, of course, the Ultimate Draft Kit with the Dynasty Pass is available right now at ultimatedraftkit.com. Quick question of the day. And it's, Jason, an, it's an important one. Jason is donning his dinner butter shirt today. And um, here's the quick question. Should Stay you hungry. Should you draft... <laughs> Stay hungry. Uh, should you draft for need or best available player in Dynasty rookie drafts? This is, in some ways, maybe the worst question you could ever ask because 
I think everybody has stared this in the face and 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 looked at rookie rankings and looked at their team and then felt at a crossroads between the do I take the player that people say I should take or do I take the player that my team really needs that I believe in and it's brutal. I mean, I think and, is it fair to say that everybody's made a mistake because they've chosen the wrong answer to this question? Yes. yes. And and let's just call a spade a spade. This isn't do I draft best player available or position of need? This is really specific in almost every league. It's I need a running back. Yes. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. what it always yeah, yeah. is. I really need a running back, and so should I draft them ahead of these other wide receivers that you've got ranked ahead of the running backs? Um, or, you know, do do I fill that out? My team is good, but I'm desperate for a running back. And I can tell you straight up, I have – I know the correct answer to this. <laughs> but you don't. D doing the correct answer <laughs> is harder than it seems, and I have – made the egregious mistake and uh, just what well, which one are you thinking oh, of man. in particular Jason? i'm thinking of when i took uh running back <laughs> from yep. the san francisco 49ers when they traded up uh for I, <laughs> always who, a reminder there they uh, traded up to get was yeah. this trey sermon you, yeah I, mean, I don't know why i mean you're the one who did it but yes i remember yeah. it very clearly um, it was, it and, was uh, funny my my team was stacked at wide receiver and uh, had some problems with running back, and so I I did select him. Do you Let's remember some not, of the people you passed on? I remember one of them. <laughs> I remember the one that I was debating between because I knew I should have taken. Who, who was that? That was Jalen Waddle. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> oh man, just take the best player. Take the one that you know is really good. You know, I I I did think. I mean, full disclosure, I, I thought Trey Sermon was going to be good. His situation looked great. Um, I I thought his film was good enough. And when you go to the San Francisco 49ers and Kyle Shanahan, that running scheme, uh, the future did look bright. So I I don't I, I was wrong. It was just bright on for that. Elijah Mitchell. Yeah, right. Exactly. It turned out it was Elijah Mitchell, which thankfully I did grab him in the third. But um, yeah. Jalen Waddle was a, a a known commodity, a great prospect, a, a first number round. number six, five, five. He was six, six, yeah, six. In, in the NFL draft. So you you just don't pass on those guys. It's a mistake. If if you in the end, when you draft a player who is good for fantasy, they are more valuable than when you draft why, a player who is bad for fantasy. Trade them for a running back. Why do I feel like in our experience specifically? I mean, Mike, you have a Royce. Freeman in your past. Yeah, it's a Royce Freeman, DJ Moore, pretty similar. And you also have a Clyde edwards alaire in your past. Yes. So is this specific to running backs mistakes? Yeah, it, it very much is. I would, I'll would i fill in a little bit here saying it's when the, when the draft capital is that egregious, you got to take you got to take the and I know I've, I've talked about the NFL makes mistakes, but it, you, the game of probability if a wide receiver is drafted at number six overall versus a running back who was selected in the third round, you you got to go with the wide receiver there just because the, the odds are. As you're moving along into, you know, like the second round and the it, and guys are in, you know, the tiers are emptying out. And you're, well, now I'm down to a tier in my, in my rookies, you know, like a, a, a tier three wide receiver or a tier three running back, then go ahead and take for need. But if there is still a top tier mm -hmm. position, like – and and I don't I don't I, even if it's uh, running back or wide receiver just whatever it is and there's just a a huge staggering draft capital difference between the two players I'm gonna I'm gonna chase the probability and the analytics of the, that player working out for fantasy yeah and I I would add quarterbacks in a super flex league sometimes you know you might be in the early second round and there's a quarterback that pretty much isn't going to do anything and but you need quarterbacks so you you grab them over really good prospects there at running back and wide receiver um you've got to just take the the highest probability hit of talented players versus need and I think that yeah because I think the running back thing specifically has to do with people understand that when you have that magical you know, secret weapon at running back, how powerful it is. And it's easier to be tempted by the Clyde, Sonny Michelle, Rashad Penny. Uh, you know, there, there's a laundry list of fairly high draft capital running backs that 
haven't panned out because everybody's hunting for the next Saquon and McCaffrey. And, and so I think that temptation becomes the, the greatest when it deals with a running back. But and that's, uh, for those guys, like looking at that conversation, even, you know, a round one versus a round three player of probability of hitting, it's a wide margin. But you can have that micro tier of looking in the first round. All the Sony, Rashad, even though I think Rashad Penny, he seems like a hit as a player, but his body doesn't want to play football. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, uh, called but, a fantasy bust. But the uh, and Clyde Edwards Alaire, those are later second half uh, rookie picks in the first round where Saquon. Christian McCaffrey, uh, Leonard Fournette had his time, but those were like top 10 picks in the NFL, a much higher rate of hitting. Let me let me give you some data behind this uh, situation. Of the 40 running backs selected since 2015 in Dynasty rookie drafts, okay, so that is players selected inside of Dynasty rookie drafts that were third or later in the NFL draft, so I guess you mean third overall, five became RB1s their first year. So five of forty. Yeah. Um, so third round. Yeah. Is that but, what we're talking about here, Kyle? Yep. Yeah. Third round or later, like Royce yeah. Freeman type. Yeah, because it. Yeah, first and second round draft capital matters so much. Yeah. So I. I mean, it's just. Um, <laughs> you can spin yourself into. A, a circle. Is that how? The, is that the phrase? Yeah, is that sure. a phrase? Yeah, I would say a spiral. But I, uh, I lost the the idiom. <laughs> That halfway works. that works and obviously this sounds is to, wrong i mean a spiral is you spin a, yourself a circle, into right? a uh, spiral is not a circle <laughs> right it's, it's circular but it's not a circle a circle connects on itself i guess i'm thinking of like when you throw a football and it spirals do you, do you spin it's, yourself it's into a, a circular motion. into a tizzy is that a thing well, you can but that's not a geometric shape right that's just a word we made up yeah i'm just trying to remember the phrase spin yourself into Oh, you work yourself into a tizzy. Yes. You spin mm. yourself into, right a, round, into a spiral. Baby, right <laughs> into a spiral. Um, Professionals. Like, and it, <laughs> uh, obviously, every single year, the rookies that are coming out, there are there are differences. There might be four great wide receivers, one great running back, vice versa. This year, if you're not up to date on the rookies that are coming out and you're looking forward to them, that's going to be basically next week's shows. Tuesday, we got quarterbacks and running backs. Thursday, wide receivers and tight ends. And if you are in the dynasty, we're going to start with running backs next week, dive even deeper, go to more prospects. All We're going to get you prep yep. for this NFL draft coming up soon. That way you know all the players that some succeed and some fail. You know all of them. Yep. yep. All right. Uh, great news. News and notes from around the league. Falcons head coach Arthur Smith named Desmond Ritter the team's starting quarterback. Cool. Thanks, Arthur. That's going to work real well. Sean McVay said that Matthew Stafford is healthy. There won't be limitations. Ready to rumble. That's good. All right. Eagles are bringing back the Kelly Green alternates. That's Ooh, great. Uh, yeah, we, everyone loves that. Yeah. It, it is one of those universal things. Like I've never seen, I've never seen someone with the take like, "Man, I hate those Kelly Green. They're so ugly." I've never heard that once. Oh, they're great. Uh, and then you know Brian Edwards and Marquez Callaway signed one year deals. Yeah, yeah. Brian Edwards to the Saints, Marquez Callaway to the Callaway it's to the Broncos. Gonna work this time. <laughs> it's gonna work this Brian time. Edwards. I mean, <laughs> it's funny what? that he. The, the, this is a hundred percent. Your friend Derek Carr doing you a solid. That's what that is to me. It tells me that Derek Carr still believes it's going to work this time. <laughs> Fourth time is the try. Oh, man. How Brian Edwards keeps getting jobs and snaps even like and do nothing with it. It's like he has the invisibility cloak on, on yeah. the field. He's on the, he's on the field. It's because he's, he's so good he has to play that way. Mm. He, he just all the defensive coverage goes to Brian do Edwards. Do you think he is the best – practice player of all time <laughs> like he just must maybe. dominate these practices maybe he gets tired you know it's like man i did so much work at practice i'm not ready for this game the cincinnati Bengals have signed tight end irv smith jr to a one-year deal uh, he was a second round draft pick in 2019 he's played just eight games over the last two years 
There was so much optimism around Irv Smith, especially once Kyle Rudolph left two years ago mm -hmm. in Minnesota, and it has not come to fruition. Just 24.6 years old, gets an opportunity to, you know, kind of, you know, it's a good situation. We talked yes, about tight is. end being, or I'm sorry, Cincinnati being one of the places where a tight end could go and have some success. We the difference between I think this and like Evan Ingram in Jacksonville one year deal is that obviously Evan Ingram had had more historical success on the field. Irv Smith, I don't think he's been over three hundred and fifty yards in a season, maybe around there. But obviously an athlete, obviously somebody that can score some touchdowns. Yeah, I mean, what was your reaction to this move? My reaction as someone who uh, I have Irv Smith on one of my dynasty rosters and I've liked his talent in the past. He's never been able to be on the field. This was great news. Uh, I, I think it's actually good for everybody. Irv Smith was pretty much dead in the water value wise. It didn't look like he was going to have a situation where he could be fantasy relevant at all. Probably the rest of his career. I kind of forgot he was a free agent. Exactly. Because <laughs> you hadn't heard a single thing. And to show up in the vacated role of Hayden Hurst for a high-powered team that you know is going to throw for 30-plus touchdowns. Like, this is his chance at, you know, doing something of, of relevance for fantasy football. And then on the flip side, I actually, you know, I, I don't think Irv Smith is going to be a reliable week-in, week-out starter. No tight ends are. And I think he will not be as good as Hayden Hurst was. So this isn't huge. But he is good enough to help the offense, to help Joe Burrow. He'll have a few touchdowns and a couple big plays uh, that can help open up the offense. Right now, the the depth chart is Irv Smith Jr. and and Devin Aziazi. Who no, Aziazi also so hoy, it, hoy. Uh, several disappointments. His you know at the tight end position, but that have athleticism. Um, and for Irv Smith, like if these trends continue, you had you know just a couple years ago you had C.J. Uzama was the starting tight end for the Bengals. He leaves, got that money. Mm -hmm. Hayden Hurst, one year, repairs some value, goes and signs a three-year, $21 million deal. If Irv Smith can show anything of value, he's going to make himself some money. Yeah, he's still only 24 years old, which is, you know, is surprising. He's a young, young man. All right, any other news to go over? No, sir. No? Um, Kyle? Any comments on the uh, commitment to Desmond Ritter for your hometown team? It's a weird way to say Lamar Jackson to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Is that are you projecting something out there? I mean, are oh, you hoping? Man. My heart does, but no. I'm, if they go with Ritter, it's just let's roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> let's roll with it. Oh, that was a sad <laughs> like you have a choice. You're gonna be getting Ritter that season. It's gonna be all yeah. over. <laughs> I liked it. All right, we are into the mailbag. Here we go. Bag. Bag. <laughs> All right, we are into the mailbag answering your questions. If you have a question of your own you want to submit, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click that submit a question button, or you can dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. And um, let's start with a voicemail. Hey, guys, this is the Fantasy Football Genie. I'm here granting you each one wish this off season, and I'm wondering what that is. Okay. I have, I have, a, I have a new wish. Okay. <laughs> it's a selfish, selfish. Well, of course it is. It's a, it works two ways for me. I want DeAndre Hopkins traded to the Buffalo Bills. <laughs> Okay. okay. Do you, like, do you, okay. Do you appreciate I, this? I just can't wait to share my wish. So <laughs> so this is for a second-round pick. So the Cardinals get their, their draft capital, and my dynasty quarterback, Joshua Allen, gets a season of throwing the football to Stephon Diggs and DeAndre Hopkins, which I think they will break records. If they have pretty good. If they have those two. So Hopkins, I think, will be fantasy relevant. I think Allen gets better. Cardinals get worse necessarily, but better draft capital. That's where I'm going. Yeah, and, and I think that is not an unreasonable uh, outlook. Like it, that could happen. I could see the Bills doing that. And it would be good for everyone except for Stephon Diggs. My genie wish 
of the offseason. The reason I laughed is because it would be that Austin Eckler is traded to the Bills <laughs> and they draft Bijan as the replacement. So it's a twofer um, because I want Austin Eckler to still have a lot of fantasy relevance. If he leaves, that's the destination I'd want him to go to. The Bills have been looking for a a that this type of back. They've they've drafted the pass catching backs. They brought in Can Duke I? Johnson. They were in the Christian McCaffrey sweepstakes. They they really they want to do something that they have not been able to do as an offense because they don't have the personnel to do it, and Austin Eckler can do it. Let me ask you though, could that be a wrong way to think of it? Because they've added like Duke Johnson has had success in the NFL level mm -hmm. pa catching the football. You know who else has? Naeem Hines, who they traded for. Naeem Hines has had historical seasons catching the football. Still didn't do it in Buffalo. Like, is there a world where they are the trap pass-catching running back team? Because when the play breaks down, Josh Allen, you know, for all the wishes and desires that we have for him to, to dump it down to a superstar, look, he he, he's a, he reacts. like, And he's got a, a, a body that can go and, and head downfield instead of dropping it off like – I think there's. I think a, it's a trap in uh, Buffalo. I, I completely see what you're saying that Josh Allen isn't going to be the guy that checks it down as much as he tucks and runs. But the the versions of Naeem Hines and Duke Johnson that the Buffalo Bills received were not peak uh, age, peak career versions of those players, and those aren't players that demand targets that have plays drawn up in the passing game for them that are regularly called and and gone to they are players who have the ability to catch that check down that's probably not coming from Josh Allen Austin Eckler if they trade for him give him a contract they would be putting him into the game plan in the roles where he succeeds so I, I see that it could be a trap but I want a high-powered offense Mike what is your wish for the fantasy genie uh let's find out if Trey Lance can actually play Oh, you just want him to be yeah. on the field? I'm not. I won't. I won't even say I'm wishing that he plays and he's great. I just want to know at this point. Like I've had we two full off seasons of Trey Lance discussion. Could he be this? Could he be that? Half of people on Twitter. Oh, it's, clearly he sucks. You're like, well, we don't know. And then you got the the Trey Lance truthers. No, clearly he's going to be good. Well, we 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 don't know. We have no clue what Trey Lance could do on the field. And I. Just what I'd like to find out. It would be great to see because the arguments want answers. Yes. And, and I, I've got bad news for you, Mike. I, don't, you know, I, I know what it We're is. We're not getting those answers. I, I, I had more thought on the Sam Darnold signing. Okay. And I, I think what it comes down to is they know already for sure that the early offseason programs, the beginning of when they're out there on the field – that Brock Purdy is not going to be ready. They're, they're aware of that. And so their options are either have Trey Lance once again be the entirety of your first team offense, build for him, and you know now you've got to make a tough transition, or say, hey, let's bring someone else in and have these guys compete We'll get used to you know the, you know have have first reps split, so we're not just taking it away from. Trey Lance because we know we're going to Brock Purdy that's how it feels to me I feel like they are 100 percent and obviously the GM came out he said he deserves it based on how he played last year unless his arm doesn't work and the surgery is a failure Brock Purdy will be the starter I'm very convinced of that now it is interesting that the, the offense I, made for Trey Lance and made for Sam Darnold or made for Trey Lance or made for Brock Purdy could look very different from one another, they yeah. could, but they they uh they transitioned from their all the off season plans of Lance right back to Garoppolo, perfectly fine, and then that went right into Brock Purdy, perfectly fine. Shit I'm not him. concerned about the team of okay for that, but it's like, man, if you just want to know that this, yeah, that's that, at this point the genie can grant just, that wish. I just want to know, and I <laughs> I I think Jason could be right. Of we still won't know, we still won't, and he'll just be a backup. For the rest and, of his life, and never we we will never ever know. I mean, do we know more? Or do we we know more about Jordan Love than we do Trey Lance? I uh, think so. I mean, at the yeah. very at the very least, they have more practice. Uh, we might not know from from you know game action live 
non-preseason play, but at the same time, he's been practicing for years. The Green Bay Packers know what they have. Trey Lance hasn't been practicing while he's been injured. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we, He is a real unknown commodity, but I believe that another team out there, you know, someone like the Colts or the Falcons, like, go kick the tires on Trey Lance. But if any, uh, if, if the San Francisco seasons of the past, you know, recent history are anything to be uh, used as projection for moving forward, Trey Lance will win fantasy titles this year as Brock Purdy will be the starter. Mm. And then round, what, week 10, week 11, he will go on to the IR and then Trey Lance will come in and get injured. Great. And then Sam Darnold. No, no that's not, not how it works. That's okay. not how it works. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick break and come back with another voicemail question. All right, by the way, 83 career pass attempts for Jordan Love, 102 for veteran Trey Lance. Yeah, I think Lance has three. He has the three starts. He has uh, Lance well, has four. I think he has four starts, but three complete games. And uh, he has much more experience in a uh, torrential downpour. Mm -hmm. Yes. Full game. <laughs> and full, full game. Like, and, uh, and third of his career. And physical uh, rehab. Of injuries. Yeah. Trey no, Lance lot, has been doing a lot of that. Different kinds of experience. Yeah. All right. Into the uh, next voicemail question. Fantasy footballers. Michael from Van Nuys, California. Appreciate what you guys do. My question. Would you trade Josh Jacobs for the 101 in Dynasty? I have the trade on the table. Should I pull the trigger? I would be the one trying to get the number one pick. Mr. Bijan Robinson. You God have, bless. You have the trade on the table? Like, oh. It's the Bijan Minute. Yeah. I feel like Jason's not allowed to answer this question. I agree. Yeah, that's fine. I His face tells me how... How? I mean, there's not even like... there. I already know your guys' answer. I know all their answers. I know everyone in the world's answers. But go ahead. I'm I'm out. I recuse myself. <laughs> Mike? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, you should. Josh Jacobs in year one of this trade is probably going to be a lot better than B. John Robinson. I would not put it at probably i would say possibly certainly certainly could be i mean he was the running back three last year he could be the running back three again this year and be the could, rushing leader yeah yeah i mean he was great i i see your point like this coming season josh jacobs absolutely could finish better than Bijan. yeah that's he could or slightly relevant or you have i mean it was 1150 yards 1065 872 1600 yards or that was Josh Jacobs' big bada boom season, and then you go back to him being just being good, which is I mean, you know, with a thousand and twelve touchdowns, that's great for fantasy. I want to be, I want to be on the train with you that everybody should just get on the Bijan train, buy a ticket, and man. we all have tickets, and it just goes to you know paradise, right? That's the destination. Right now, it is, but that's not a guarantee. And it, you should take Bijan in this trade because it's the best, it's the best player in the deal, in the sense of draft capital, youth, age, yeah. age, prospect could be a top fifteen pick. You should do it in a dynasty league. But like I said, year one you may be better off with Josh Jacobs, and we got to remember Josh Jacobs is not, he's not like he's twenty five. Yeah, he's not very old. So there's also the world where he's the better player for three years. For the next three years, that is that is a universe that exists without question. It, yeah, it's not a one hundred percent certainty that Bijan is going to be better than Josh Jacobs. It is a one hundred percent certainty that he's four years younger, and it is a one hundred percent certainty that he will be under contract for more years. I mean, Josh Jacobs is in a contract year, playing under the franchise tag this coming season, so he'll have to find a new home or a new contract somewhere, and that's not good for a twenty-six-year-old running back next year so, so situationally then, it's not it's so know. are you trading javante williams for josh jacobs because he's 22 well javante williams i don't expect to have a. you know I, I i'm not sure what kind of season he's gonna have i don't think he's going to be relevant Do you this trade year Brees Hall for end. josh jacobs i would trade josh jacobs for Brees hall is that what you're saying yeah would you do that too mike yeah would you trade take, josh jacobs i'd for? take Brees and the 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 way it stands right now, before the NFL draft has happened, 
Josh Jacobs looks set up for an incredible year because right now the depth start is Amir Abdullah, Brandon Bolden, and last year I think Zamir White was a fourth rounder, but I think that the Raiders found out everything they need to know about him. They're going – they won't go into the NFL season with this as their depth chart. But Josh Jacobs will have almost an identical season. I, That's almost – he's got okay. the same head coach. The sa He's going to have the same type of offensive dependency. Josh Jacobs is going to have a massive year. I will, but he won't I have as he, long of a career as those other guys. Yeah, he will have a good year, but I don't – I would bet heavily against him hitting 1,600 rushing yards again. Yeah, so I, I agree with both the, – the core of what both of you are saying. Josh Jacobs is going to be awesome this year. I feel like 1,200 – and 10 as a rusher is near locked barring injury. And that's awesome. Yeah, it's a great year. That's still a far cry from what he did last year, but that is awesome. And I, I, I think the role, no matter who they bring in, the role is going to basically be the same as what we saw this last season. They paid. They paid for it, too. Mm -hmm. um, here's a question, a couple of them, actually, about Travis Kelsey. Twitter, play action pod. Is this the year that Travis Kelsey gets dethroned? As the top tight end, what are your thoughts on Hawkinson this year? Nope. <laughs> nope. No, he's not getting to throw. Oh, man. Especially with Lamar Jackson. Like, the the one player that I think could, you know, maybe compete with him is Mark Andrews. But Mark Andrews can't compete with him if Lamar Jackson's not a Raven. You're not – nothing for TJ Hawkinson, who, let's see, joining the Minnesota Vikings, uh, his pace was – not as impressive as I thought. I know so that's what <laughs> I, I, he was. He was great for T.J. Hawkinson. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was he was impressive because he'd ha he's had years of being disappointing. He was impressive because he was so high in the pecking order of the offense. But when you actually look at the cumulative stats, I'm going to remove. You want to know the <laughs> that was look. very funny. I'm going to remove the final week of the season because he. <laughs> He had one catch and he played forty six percent of the snaps. Like, we're I'll take that one out, and it's still a seventeen game pace of one hundred eleven catches. Nice, nine hundred fifty yards. Here's here's what's funny. Six no, and again, we're not talking about it. They just won the world championship. They're the top dogs, the Chiefs. They got it, and they'll probably fix some things at wide receiver. But right now, the storyline in Kansas City is Kadarius Tony and Sky Moore. And MVS. Okay, okay and MVS. But and MVS is the end of a <laughs> sentence that you meant. Like, he's fine. But they lost McCall Hardman. They lost Juju. And it's just kind of funny because it's like the expectation. Sky Moore is going to step up. Kadarius Tony is going to step up. Like, the history is that Travis Kelsey steps up. I mean, it's just, it's like nothing in their current depth chart does anything to say he's going to take and a step back. I actually, I did a little bit of research because obviously tight end age um, is, age is important for all of these. Um, and when looking specific to, to tight ends, he's at an age that you would think normally is bad. I talked about this a little bit last season, but if you factor in Greek God, it's right, actually, you peak, that, at, that you, you peak at human 50. So he's actually got about a decade and a half left. Oh, before if you're he looking at his, God years? God years, he's going to be 50 years old when he hits his peak. So he's actually going to be healthier, stronger, probably an inch taller this coming season. Still growing. Still, he's, he's a growing <laughs> young man. Zeus is, uh, yeah, no one's dethroning Travis Kelsey unless Travis Kelsey gets injured and misses uh, a large chunk of time. If he misses four games, no one's dis no one is dethroning him. Uh, follow up then from McCade Gordon on Twitter. What should I expect in return for Kelsey in a dynasty league? What's the least I should try to acquire? Okay, so I saw this question earlier, and I, I wanted, I was thinking, if I had Travis Kelsey right now, I would go and offer him straight up for Mark Andrews. There's really, a, yeah, because there's a lot of fear. You don't know the Andrews is twenty seven. Uh, we'll grab that. sounds about right, but let's, let's 27. Perfect. Um, so he's five years younger than Travis Kelsey. He has all obviously proven that he can be a stud, I be an all-star. Right. I think you're right about that. And there's a lot of fear over the quarterback situation. You might not have Lamar. You might have the worst situation imaginable. So you could get 
in some leagues, I think you could get the deal done. Mark Andrews' manager is probably freaking out. And there is also the world where two weeks from now, Lamar Jackson is back and he's a Raven, and now you've you've gotten However, younger to the position. You have Travis Kelsey in your champion champ. Yes. Yes. You trading him for Mark Andrews? No. No, I will answer There's that. No no, There's no way you'll do that. There's no way you'll do it because you want champ, 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 that's, champ. That's why the, the Travis Kelsey trade – the value is is so interesting because if you have him, someone who anybody in here have Mark Andrews that wants to go send that offer through, it would be no. it would be Damon. So and you're going to decline it. I know you will. Here, but here's I would not. Mike would. I would, and, and, and we would have to discuss. It, here's the way I look at Travis Kelsey. Either you are a team that can compete. Maybe you don't look at yourself. I'm not the overwhelming favorite, but I'm going to make it into the playoffs. Then Travis Kelsey is invaluable to the team like because he is such a, a a competitive advantage at a position where other people are like yeah I got four points oh yeah we <laughs> did it baby I got one yard and one one touchdown I got seven points and people are super stoked about that <laughs> so either you can compete and you have him and championships are everything in a dynasty league they are everything or you can't compete and you go to someone who can compete and you make them pay the iron price it is it is a uh, it is a up and coming stud player it is probably multiple first round picks because Travis Kelsey I, I think more than any other player in in like a dynasty league can be the piece that turns a team that can compete into a championship contending team the question being posed to Mike and I's co-managed team that we are really looking for the championship, champ, 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 the fourth, yes. the yeah. fourth championship in a we row. Gotta, we got a back to back, back to back title winners. Is the proof of what you're saying? You're you're saying he is a difference maker to go from being a good team yes. to winning the championship, which we have just done with Travis Kelsey the last three years. Because you make our, strong arguments. Our team has been good. Our teams have have limped into the playoffs basically every year and only been a good team. And then Travis Kelsey does what Travis Kelsey does, and we, we end up winning championships. Kyle, Kyle is just berating your team in the yeah. Slack channel. Let me tell you what I paid for Travis. Champ, champ, champ! <laughs> let me, let me, I can tell you exactly what I paid to get Travis Kelsey last year in the Dynasty League. I have it right in front of me. All right. I gave up Travis Kelsey. You traded Wait Kelsey. I'm sorry, Kelsey sorry. Incredible. <laughs> How'd you pull that off? I call it the boomerang. <laughs> I throw it out there, and it comes right back to my team. That's the only trade I will take for Kelsey is I trade him to you, and you trade him back to me. But I want something coming back on the return. <laughs> you can taste him, but it's going to cost you a third-round pick. You let's bring, can, let's bring you a, little, a, taste a little, little, little dust for you your team. You take a screenshot, <laughs> you have flex online, and then send him back. <laughs> you get a taste of a player on your team for no games. Yeah. It's a screenshot yeah. taste. Yeah. yeah, but it's going to feel real good. Well, that didn't. I didn't do that well. <laughs> I gave up Godwin, Gabe Davis, Dulcich, Warren, a second, and two thirds for Kelsey and Mike Evans. Yeah. You won yeah. I feel trade. like I won that yeah, trade. You, you definitely yeah, won that It trade. seems like it. You were reading. Do you off feel that way now? A year, I mean, I didn't win the title. I went to the semifinals. Yeah, as you were reading, because like a lot, a lot of it comes down to Mike Evans and Chris Godwin of what is what is going to happen in Tampa Bay when Jason's champion Kyle Trask <laughs> is is the one throwing touchdowns. <laughs> it's not going to be Baker, Trask. Baby. It's going to be Baker. It's Baker. <laughs> uh, Instagram question from Trevor: Najee Harris or Saquon Barkley in a dynasty startup? Oh, that's a fun. That is a. I, oh, I know my man. answer, and I think I, do, I know my. Answer. I think my answer is going to be different than consensus and majority. I uh, I I would go Saquon. I would go Najee, and I I Mike, think most people would go Saquon. So Najee is twenty six. They're one year turned, apart. He just turned twenty six. Najee's twenty five because he was a little bit older. I would go Saquon Barkley. Instagram question from Big Dog Ryan says, "Can you still be friends with a league mate if you found out they listen to the same fantasy football podcast? You well, can yeah. be better I was, friends. I was going to say best friends. What you want? Someone with good taste? You want someone with a good sense yeah. of humor? You like people that dress nice? Yeah. You want some with that some smell good with things in common and probably handsome? Independently wealthy? <laughs> well, you know they listen here, so yeah, best they friends. They read lots of books. What you do? They drive is you, a Dodge Stratus. You you look at your league mates and you go." That guy's that guy's a weirdo. 
<laughs> uh, that guy, that guy's awesome. Yeah. And then you already know. You yeah. already know they yeah. listen. Everybody that's awesome in your league listens to this show. Yeah. You just, it, you it, just, it's they hush, didn't hush tell right you now. about it. And as soon as it's revealed, you become closer friends. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great that's, question. That's a great question. Uh, Kyle on the website, who is the better keeper? Value. Chris Olave for a sixth. Khalil Herbert for a ninth. That's not close. No. Oh, that, that, that was, was the end of the list. The I was waiting for I was waiting name. For, yeah. yeah. No, that's uh, Give me uh, Olave. Give me Chris Olave. Olave. Twitter question from uh, Andy Shamir says, is it safe to drop Tom Brady in Dynasty? It's never safe. <laughs> I just dropped <laughs> – Rob I saw Gronkowski. It. I this saw morning. it because somehow, somehow Trey Sermon was on our dynasty waiver wire. Jason, what did you do? Dude, I missed that. You were oh, the one so who I, had him. So you, yeah, you, you I, were like, uh, I mean, you were like, look, how did Andy yeah. get Trey yes. Sermon? Yeah, I, I saw it today, and look, I was, I was, I was remiss. Your hmm. odds of Trey Sermon, and you picked him up because there was a little tiny little fluff piece out of Philadelphia of Trey Sermon so has, small. has a chance to be good, but that's what we need. That's yeah, what we take. I mean, that is our source of life in dynasty over the off season. It's like, wait, wait, the coach said something positive about this player. Yeah, I, will, up. I will pick it him was, up. It was the most Brian Edwards piece of news that has ever come out about a player. It was like Trey Sermon always does something amazing yeah. in practice that makes us all turn our heads and then not play him. You got it. These, but you never know. Miles no, Sanders is gone. These players need to be at Rashad Penny. His contract <laughs> is not guaranteed that he's going to be on the Philadelphia Eagles. If he's on, his health, the, the past of his health does not guarantee he's going to be playing multiple games. So, yeah, you add these people. This is how you make moves in Dynasty. Um, and that's part of what makes it so if fun. If you can get Jalen Waddell on your team, I'll swap, <laughs> I'll swap Sermon for him. He has Waddell. <laughs> <laughs> So Jason just punished me by unplugging my charging cable on my laptop. That's right. And in a few hours, you are going to be really upset. It's the long con. Also, while doing that, I almost spilled my drink. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, here's a good one. Let's end with this one. Instagram question about an interesting player. Will Isaiah Pacheco surpass all expectations this upcoming season oh man and I, I i think the chance there's a chance the answer is is yes thank you thank you and there he goes well, <laughs> yes there yes there's a chance he does and there is a chance that he vanishes and is never heard from again due to being a seventh round pick so where where are you currently have the chips here yeah but listen to March? this <laughs> I know. The feet are very fast. Um, I, I lean on the side that I think he will disappoint for okay. the, the expectations. They're not going to do First nothing. First round pick, Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be back. I was going to say, Clyde Edwards-Alaire will be back. That's not, you know, that isn't nothing. And Close, they're but it's not right, right now, they don't have McKinnon. So, I, them adding a running back makes a lot of sense. And Pacheco... He's good, but like you said, Mike, seventh round running back. There's just a lot of history of these these later round guys that, that they can be impressive and replaced. So that can happen, no doubt about it. He's being drafted in best ball ahead of Joe Mixon, ahead of Cam Akers, ahead of David Montgomery. The Joe Mixon best ball current ADP, and I know on this show that the sentiment on Joe Mixon has been pretty negative of. It sounds like is he going to be a cap uh, casualty for the Cincinnati Bengals? If that happens, and he's going, I mean, at that point, there's going to be no starting jobs where he can get the type of work for the high-powered offense that he's currently on. But going at the as the running back twenty-four, that to me almost sounds like they're saying we guarantee that this is what is going to happen to Joe Mixon. So I just say if I'm playing best ball, if I'm having the Jason amount of teams, I'm definitely grabbing. Joe Mixon in a few of my drafts, I, just I, in case. I like Pacheco and the situation because of Andy Reid and the Chiefs. His loyalty is not to draft capital Clyde Edwards-Alaire. It's not to age. Jerick McKinn is 30 years old, played a massive role in bringing them to a Super Bowl. Their priority is to production and to how hard a player practices, how hard they play. Look, if they add another piece of the puzzle, I'll change my opinion completely. But today, today I'm comfortable. Like I, I would want Isaiah Pacheco on my fantasy team um, over over Miles. Nope. 
So over, you're over like, run- David Montgomery? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> over Cam Akers? <laughs> Yeah, this that, is so turned quickly. If you look at the last, I mean, I think he's, I think he's being drafted the right place. If Let's you, put it that way. I think twenty two, twenty three. There, there's, there's a, a, a few fellers because he won't be alone. Would, he's not going to be alone in Kansas. City. He's not going to be alone in Kansas City, and he doesn't catch the ball enough to really make an impact. The last nine games where Isaiah yeah. Pacheco looked great, he was on pace for eleven hundred ninety five rushing yards. That's great. Only seven touchdowns, but those fluctuate. But eighteen total receptions would have been his. 17 game pace you know that's just barely more than a catch a game that's not enough for fantasy when you're talking about guys like Montgomery and Miles Sanders who have done more have been given a lot more money in compensation and um you know that the the path for their fantasy relevance should be easier and more obvious I'll take him over Algier does that does that help I would as well sure that's right we're in complete agreement That is going to do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Please leave us a review. Follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Lots more fantasy football goodness coming your way. Rookies, here we go. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.